Fantasy. Hello, everybody. My name is Towels. This is my barn that I turned into a gym floor. It's a little unneeded and needs some work, but whatever. So today we're going to talk about some basic kicks and uh, how to get some uh, basic kicks that don't that don't suck as much ass as they as they don't have to. Because a lot of people have sucky ass kicks. We all have sucky ass kicks at one point. You just gotta you gotta work on making them to the point where at least at least some mother out there is gonna love their child. Because some babies are ugly as fuck. First thing you want to think about uh, with basic kicks is uh, flexibility. Hello. If you're not stretching every day, I mean, I don't even know why you're trying to kick, because you're wasting your time. You should stretch every fucking day, and not just your legs, you should stretch your neck. Oh man, I used to have back problems so fucking bad, and then some dude made this big post about, dude, stretch your neck, it's connected to your back. And I was like, oh my god, that's so fucking right, your back is connected to your neck. So I stretched my neck a lot, I always make it pop until it doesn't pop anymore, and that's how I know that I stretched it right. It's like side splits front splits, other front splits. Alright, so some good stretches for your kicks. Obviously the splits. Okay, so the old side splits. People get here and they're like, I don't know what to do, I don't have to tell you, I can't go any further. What's wrong? Well, it's because you're not doing shit, you're not even fucking trying. If you get here, try to get down here and touch the ground. Try to get up here and touch the ground. Go over here, go over here, flex some shit, make it hurt. Alright, so like, you get down here as low as you can go, now what you want to imagine is there's a really hot girl right here laying down. In fact, she is a goddess. And her vagina is so fucking hot, she's got a great push, and it's level with the floor. Now what you want to do is cock tease her by rubbing, pretending like you're humping her. Because this motion, I don't know why, but something about humping the flexibility goddess really seems to help get you lower and lower and lower. If you give her a good lay, she'll reward you with full splits. So. And you, you might be thinking, oh man, what about, what about girls? How come girls don't have like a dick they can sit on? That's well, because girls are naturally flexible, they don't have to worry about any of this shit. So there you go. I don't know what the fuck, I think it's because they got less surface area, they got a giant slit in their legs that allows them to go farther. Anyways. So like, you get down here and you're like, oh my god, ah, it hurts, ah, 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 and then it doesn't hurt anymore. Because my ass is touching the floor now. And when your ass touches the floor, you get all the way to the bottom, you don't feel pain anymore. Guess what? It's great. It's because you made it all the way. Successful day. But how do you get here? How do you get to the point where your ass is on the floor and you're not touching them, you, you're, it doesn't hurt anymore? Well, you need to fucking try harder. You need to fucking make it hurt and then you need to go until it hurts and then keep going. Have somebody else help you go there if you can't do it on your own. But there are some other things that you can do. So when I go here, this is usually where people get to. They're like right about here and they're like, oh my god. Ah, uh, the pen. So right here, slowly turn to the front split. Ah, uh, and that little turning motion of your hip, I think it just, it really helps get you lower and lower. It just, ooh, it feels good. It feels really good when you get to this position, because it hurts, and when your body hurts, it releases endorphins, and those are like drugs. So your flexibility split training is like going to your drug dealer. Like right now, I'm high as shit. I'm so fucking high, and I haven't even zooted at all. So go here as much as you can. It's kind of weird trying to get your leg to go straight behind you, but you know, just kind of rock with it. Give her a little twerk, the flexibility goddess, and then go back up. You'll notice, oh wow, I can go lower now. Yeah, yeah, check that out. That's cool how that works. But wait, go to the other side, turn it out. Oh yeah, boy. Now when you're doing dynamic splits, like out of a cork or something, you're just gonna pop down on the shit and pop right back up. It's gonna be really easy. But static splits when you're cold, it's way, way different. So get into this motion, get it, feel it out, try to like rock back and forth to the side, to the side, duck down, get up straight, do whatever the fuck you want. Make it fucking hurt! I'm not trying to advocate breaking yourself, but I am trying to advocate that, so, you know, bro science, whatever the fuck, I don't care what you call it, it worked. So then you'll notice, oh wow, I can go so much further, oh my god, I'm touching the ground, I did it, I did, oh my god, I feel so good. So you're here, there's lots of things you can do, you can try to go over splits, whatever the fuck you want to do, I don't give a shit, I'm not your mom. Okay, so you're all like, I did all the front side splits I can do, I don't think I can do anymore today, what else should I do? Well, here's some other things that you can do, 
you may notice that you can go pretty far in the splits, but when you try to lift your leg, most people are like, ah, ah, I can't, ah. That's because whatever's going on down here, I mean, I'm not a doctor or a scientist, but there's some shit down here that needs to get stronger. It's not like when you, all your weight's pushing down on you, it's pretty easy to go. But when you gotta actually fight gravity and lift your leg up, this shit needs to be rock solid. So a good thing I like to do almost every day, I like to find a wall, put my hand on the wall or whatever, turn my heel outward so my heel's facing whatever, this way, and then I like to slowly lift my leg as high as I can get it. And then once you get it as high as you can, you can even tilt down and get it even higher, pull it outward that way, because that's the sexy angle. We'll talk about that in a bit. All right. So when you're doing that, uh, it's really it's easier if when you kick it out, flex everything right now, and then bring it up. It's much easier that way than to just loosey leg. Uh. All right, so you can do that with both sides. Uh, one side is almost always going to be better than the other side. My hook kick leg is way more flexible than my round kick leg. My round kick leg is like blah, but it's you know it's whatever. What are you going to do about it? You gotta stretch every fucking day, is what you're gonna do about it. Alright, so I got pretty flexible, but uh, I still, my body just feels so awkward when I kick. What should I think about? Here's what you should think about. You should think about, this is called backside stance. I'm in backside stance. That's my face I'm gonna kick, because that's a ninja. We're fighting ninjas here, people. I don't know if you didn't get the memo, but that's what we're doing. Ninja right here. How, what's the best, prettiest way to kick this ninja? I should turn my heel all the way around so my heel faces my target and slap. You see that? It was a slap. Because when your heel faces your target, it, it, like, it tilts everything and it makes it all a sexy line and it gives you more power and oomph. Here's the head, the head face, the haste of what I'm going to kick. Here's a ninja's head right here. I'm gonna blah. Okay, so that's your round kick. And a lot of people are like, I got round kick. Duh, that's simple. But I can't figure out hook kick. Well, that's because you're thinking of your hook kick and your round kick as two completely different things. When really, they're kind of the same thing. So here's what you should think about. Here's the user target. Round kick. Now right here, if you think, oh, my heel is already over there. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Round kick. That's a hook kick, because it's a round kick going the other way. It's that simple. So a great drill that I like to do when I'm warming up my kicks is uh, just go in a straight line, round kick, turn, round kick, turn, round kick, using both legs. So it's like round kick, round kick. But, that, but when you do it that way, it's a hook kick. But you want to think about it like a round kick on the opposite side, because all it is is just round kick hook. Round kick hook, hook. I walk in a straight line and I go plow, 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 plow. And all the while I'm hitting the same target. Now, another thing that you might be thinking, you know, if I'm gonna just hit somebody with a, my, with a hook kick, I'm gonna bash them in with my heel. And I'm thinking, yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, the heel would hurt a lot more than hitting them with your slappers. But, here's why you want to point your toes. Because, if you look, this is my heel right here, but this part of my heel is actually a very tender part. This is like connected to my Achilles tendon. This is one of my weakest spots in my leg, actually. Right here, though, is a bunch of callus and I could walk on glass with this thing. If I stomp it, I could murder people with that. So why do you point your toes on a hook kick? Here's why. Because if you hit them with this, ouch for you. You turn your pointed toe down, you just made a tomahawk, and now you can hit them with the bottom part. That's why you point your toes. Because you're going to be like, slap! You're going to hit them in a So, pointing your toes is sexy. We're aware of this fact. It looks better, it makes the line look cleaner. It's like, you can have a really high kick, but if it looks like that, ugh, no, no girl's gonna wanna slurp up that. But she's like, bah, she's like, ooh. 
something about him is thinner than he really is. It's thin. It's like, you want a fat kick? Or do you want a thin, sexy, slim kick? You know what I'm saying? Hey, Tows, the other day, I was posting my video of my hook kicks, and some people tell me I wasn't even doing hook kicks. That's how I was doing some crescents or some shit. All right, so I get that a lot. I used to be a problem of that myself until I figured out what a hook kick actually was. So, here's what a crescent is. It's with your leg entirely straight the whole time and it goes ooh, in this big old crescent arch like the moon. You get, you get what I'm saying? So this is, what, this is what a crescent looks like. It's just a big old hoopanani. A big old ha! Ah! And actually, I think it looks pretty sick. It's pretty badass. You know, you don't need to just completely disregard it. But then what's a hook kick? A hook kick actually has a little slap. It's like a blah. The hook kick comes across and like hooks it. So the main difference is on a crescent, your leg's gonna come all the way across and down. When on a hook kick, it's gonna come across your target and stop right here. And now from here, you can go bow. You, you have control to do whatever you want from this position into the touchdown rise or whatever. When you do crescents, most people are way off, out of line, they're just, I don't know what the fuck to do. That's because you didn't control your kick. Crescent, bah! Notice the uncontrolledness of it? Hook kick. Okay. Cool. Okay, so I pointed my toes, I got my flexibility high, I controlled it, how else can I make my hook kick cooler? Well, there's something called chambering. And all that is is, see this? That's my chamber. Look at this, chamber, kick. And then I re-chamber. It makes it look sexier. It's like, if you go like this, ah, there's no power, no, there's no snap to it. It doesn't, it, it's just like, your leg's gonna break if you hit something with that. But if you go, Snap! It's got some snap to it. It's got some pizzazz to it. And it just, it overall, it, it looks better. Alright, well that's a subjective term. But it looks more controlled because there's more going on to it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can do a backflip or you can do a double backflip in, twisting full, triple back out. One of them looks like there's more going on to it. I'm uh, probably gonna vote on that one. If I was a judge, but I'm not a judge because I don't like battles. When you do your hook kick, to get the chamber all snappy, go back to that thing where it was round kick, round kick, and then all you gotta do is when you're turning to come up here for your little, your little step over point in my heel, chamber right away, right away, slap. It helps. Okay, so some people, they work really hard on their kicks, but when they make samplers, their kicks look alright or they look shitty. Why is that? Well, you may notice that when the camera's all the way up there and I do a kick, it does, I mean, it's, it's cool, whatever, but it doesn't look that cool. Here's what would make it look a shitload better. Is if when I throw my hook kick out, is if the camera was right down there pointing at my dick. I don't know the science behind it or why that's the best spot. But wherever my dick's pointing to, that's where the camera should be. I'll show you. So I like to take a flip-flop, a GoPro, a Kendama even. They all work as good tripod. So all that shit is like fine and dandy. That's great. No one really has any arguments over, you know, all that stuff pretty much makes your hook kick better. But what are some things that are debatably better? These are, there's mainly just one, and it's the, head, it's the head whip. A lot of people are all like, ah, oh, head whip, that's bad technique, that's ugly. I personally think the head whip is sexy as fuck. And it might be because I have really long hair. Watch this, see? Notice this? Head whip with no hair. Head whip with hair. You notice the difference? Alright, so there's basic kicks. It's basically just the round kick and the hook kick. 
However, there's a shitload of kicks in between that shit. Man, there's so much you can fucking do. Alright, so I'm just gonna rapid fire and show you a bunch of all these are all just gonna be round kick variations. But there's a shitload of them. Ready? Round kick comes across. Front kick, it comes straight up. Twist kick, it goes back the way it came. Blaster scoop, it's a touchdown round kick. Kado. Same thing but without the hand. Front sweep. Front sweep with your butt touching. Front sweep with your knee touching. Oh my god, it's just it's endless. Okay, another thing to think about. When you do your kicks, it is not just your kicking leg that is doing everything. It is an entire body, every fucking thing is doing something. It's not just your opposite leg, not just your regular leg, your arms are doing some shit. A lot of people when they do cheat nines, and I used to do this all the fucking time, they do one of these. Hey! No, they punch in the air, it's like for balance, or it's like a, it's a nasty habit. If you're gonna punch when you do your kick, if you simply must punch, Punch down to block your, your ass from getting kicked and shit. Because anytime you kick, you're basically leaving yourself open to get jacked in the face. Alright, so Guthrie does this. You can see, you can watch it when he does his cheat nines. He punches down. You don't have to. You can turn your body the opposite way to crank in. It'll get you even higher. That's what you can do on hook kicks. Throw the hook kick, turn your body back. That's what creates the head whip. There you go. So it's not just this leg. You also want to think about this leg. The non-kicking leg. Because it's like... You can throw this leg out, and yeah, it can look sexy, but if this looks ugly, the whole trick kind of looks ugly. You want this leg to work with this leg as like wingmen to make everybody fall in love with your tricks. So, I mean, when you do a tornado or a cheat nine, it's kind of, it would be sexy if every time you kind of crowd awakened it a little bit. At least put some thought into your plant leg. I mean, just a little bit. I mean, if you're going to chamber it, point your toe. I mean, that looks always looks sexier than, than that. I mean, look at it. Yeah, so much better. Once and for all, to end the debate of kicks versus twists, to show you that they're really just the same fucking thing, is kicks are subjective, twists are objective. When you do a twist, there's a double cork. If you throw the double cork and you land on your feet, you did the double cork. Congratulations, good job. You get to go to the double cork club or whatever the fuck it is. When you do kicks, however, they're subjective, meaning you do a 540, and you didn't just, oh, I did a 540, I'm done. No, you gotta fucking make the 540 look sexy. You gotta make it look good, it's subjective, it's an opinion. You wanna make it look awesome, which is an opinion word. You'll never make everybody think it's awesome because everybody sucks dick. And you can't make everybody suck your dick at the same time because nobody's mouths are big enough. So, with twist, I do a dub. Alright, what's next? Well, you do a triple. What's next? There's a quad. Quit. Keep going, keep going. It'll never end. With kicks, you can do it better and better. You can always drill it. And you'll never get it there. You'll never get it as good as you want. You'll never get it as good as anybody else wants. It'll never end. They're the same fucking thing. They'll never end. Alright, there you go. So do your kicks, do your twists. Same fucking thing.